Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News. And tonight we have a very special guest, Robert Holmes, PhD. Now, you may know him as 1000 Frawley on YouTube, and he's been around for years. And he has been dishing out the real data, the real information, because he's a real scientist. And it's a pleasure to have him on the show as one of the newest climate science PhDs on the planet. Uh, Robert, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks, David. It's a pleasure to be here. So I have a whole bunch of questions for the audience. Now, I've been following you for years uh, before my channel. Uh, I actually had some Facebook pages, but I was mostly doing organizing against Monsanto uh, when I was watching you in the beginning. And, and now I've seen you uh, gain uh, subscribers through the years, and now you're, you're gaining knowledge. You've actually got a PhD in climatology, which is totally fascinating. And I'm sure it's fascinating to our listeners because if we just look at your YouTube page here, in the, your last four videos, the titles, there are titles like, there is no greenhouse effect. There is no extra warming. There is no greenhouse effect, and so on. And so that is antithetical to what most people know as climate change or climate science, because uh, aren't we all burning up, and aren't we all going to die in 12 years, Robert? <laughs> yes, the, that's, the, uh, that's the current stories that people are hearing in the mainstream media. Um, but really, there's no evidence for that. There's actually no evidence at all that CO2 even causes warming in the troposphere, which is something that they claim. But there's not a single paper in the literature which um, quantifies a warming in the troposphere and then attributes that warming to rising carbon dioxide level levels. So uh, I, f I find the situation rather odd that, that they're claiming such things when uh, there's little or no evidence for it. Now, Robert, is this one of the reasons why you went to get your PhD, or was that something you had planned on uh, the whole time? Uh, it's something I, I've been interested in doing for a long time, uh, but after doing the Masters in 2009, I, uh, and the, how hard it was, I did the thesis for that as well. I determined I wouldn't do another one, but uh, changed my mind. Uh, in 2014 and decided to um, do the PhD, go back to uni, become a full-time student, and that's where I've been for the last five and a half years, and uh, officially graduated uh, a couple of weeks ago on May the 14th, and uh, I've posted the uh, ceremony on my channel. Uh, what I mainly was trying to get to is uh, I wanted to pursue truth in science and I also wanted to stop all the deaths and poverty that have been caused by the false climate alarm. I mean, there's no need for any climate alarm over carbon dioxide. It's not causing all the problems that, they, that is claimed by the mainstream media and um, by the IPCC and in turn, our politicians are being influenced by this. So um, that's why I wanted to get more truth out there uh, into the arena of science. Well, that's what we're trying to do as well. And I'm, I'm sure you're uh, well versed on the natural climate variability that you and I know is going on and that the mainstream refuses to actually look at the data. Um, additionally, the IPCC and the cabal of the climate alarmists themselves, they have been adulterating and misinforming the public for nearly a decade. And it is absolutely um, a sham as when it comes to science, they're absolutely doing science uh, a great deal of harm. And how did you get along with your colleagues as you were going along with this PhD for uh, climate, climate science. I mean, I'm surely there were, what was your thesis on? <laughs> well, 
Well, the thesis was on uh, mitigation. Uh, a lot of, well, most of it's on climate science, where I'm critical of the IPCC. I've got 500 references in relation to that in the thesis, but uh, also I was looking at mitigation. I cut emissions uh, at an underground coal mine that I was working at back in uh, 2012. I cut about 250,000 tons CO2 equivalent of emissions over a three-year period um, at a cost of 40 cents per ton, and that formed part of the thesis. Um, it's really odd that uh, I'm being criticised by um, climate proponents uh, when I've cut emissions far more than most of them put together. So. Uh, it tells me that in, in, instead of instead of instead of them being critical of me, they should be asking me how I cut the emissions by so much, uh, and at such a low cost, which is around about a hundred times cheaper per ton than uh, cutting emissions by using wind farms or solar panels. So. Um, I guess when when they they don't really listen to uh, that side of it, it tells you that their aims are not really about emissions. That's what it tells me, anyway. Well, isn't it completely antithetical to your standpoint and your viewpoint as a scientist, a climate scientist, a PhD? Um, why are you worried about cutting CO2 emissions if it has no effect uh, on the climate? Uh, if man, if if man-made anthropogenic global warming is a scam, and it's a scam to change the policy, which is now you know scrub the atmosphere of CO2 and all these carbon credits, why would you work on that if it has nothing to do with us? We didn't do it. Is it because that's the only funding and the only line of research that would be credible to get your PhD? Yes, this this is a problem uh, that we have in the universities uh, universities today. That um, you have to, to a degree, toe the line of climate science. Otherwise, uh, you just don't get anywhere at all. So I did the emissions cuts as an exercise uh, because it didn't make any difference at all to the climate, as I knew it wouldn't. Even if everybody in the world could all their emissions down to zero, it wouldn't do and it make any difference at all to the climate. So, um, yes, it, uh, having having that uh, emissions cuts in the thesis really really helped me to uh, get the approval for from a PhD and and to uh, get the little bit of funding that they do give to students to keep them, uh, you know, going for the few years of the uh, writing of the thesis. So this is quite interesting. You towed their line and you actually were able to cut more CO2 in your models than the actual warmists were cutting in their models. <laughs> that's, a, that's amazing. And uh, kudos to you, my friend. Now let's talk about your channel. What got you started at 1000 Frawley, PhD? Um, probably going back to the 90s, uh, mid 90s, I, I heard about, the, of course, like everybody, I heard about the uh, climate change through CO2, the global warming alarm was being spread around at that time. And I didn't really take much interest in it or not much notice, but I thought, well, these uh, scientists are probably correct, you know, that we need to do something to cut emissions. Uh, and uh, But then after looking at the science a few years later, when I actually studied it and looked into it in the early 2000s, then I realized that um, I became more of a lukewarmist. I, thought, I started to think, well, this. The climate sensitivity must be quite low, and that's what all the research is, is heading towards now. The published papers are heading towards lower and lower climate sensitivity. And uh, in the more recent few years, I've uh, sort of decided and worked out from the scientific um, 
uh, work that I've done, uh, that the climate sensitivity is actually very close to zero. So if, if the climate sensitivity is zero, then there's no greenhouse effect. So anyway, uh, if people are thinking, well, there must be a greenhouse effect, well, uh, what, the, what the IPCC are talking about is a 33 degree difference between 255 Kelvin, which is a predicted temperature from black body laws, uh, to the 288 Kelvin that we've actually got. That's the measured 288 Kelvin that we've got in the lower atmosphere. So they claim that that 33 degrees difference is entirely due to the greenhouse effect. Well, uh, my work has told me that really it's due to auto compression. Uh, so it's an atmospheric effect, it's not a greenhouse effect. Well, I can't agree with you more. Uh, what do you uh, say, uh, what are your thoughts and what's your position on the effect of the sun and solar cycles and total solar irradiance of the sun on the earth? And, and what, what are your thoughts on how that affects the upper and lower troposphere and the global temperature as a whole? Yeah, I'm making a series on my channel of um, climate science videos. There's four up there already. There's going to be probably four more. The next one is going to be on um, the IPCC's um, radiative theories. Uh, and what they predict the radiative forcing from CO2 is compared to other radiative forcing. So it's, it's going to include a fair bit about the sun and the, the mistakes that the IPCC have made with estimating solar forcings and the mistakes they've made with estimating CO2 forcings and so on. So I'll go into a lot more detail in that in my next video on that subject. Uh, but the, there are actually... I found in the literature 16 different climate-related cycles, natural cycles, um, only one of which the IPCC actually uses in its reports. That's the Schwab solar cycle, the 11-year solar cycle. They, they uh, acknowledge that one, but they ignore the other 15. So uh, some of the main climate cycles, the ones that they ignore that they shouldn't ignore is the Yoshimura and the Gleisberg, uh, the Bond solar cycle, um, and the Bray. So those are the four most important ones that they should really put into their models, but none of them are in there. Also, the models are a big problem because they don't include clouds either in the models. So the, the models are totally useless for what they're trying to do, which is predicting the climate in 50 years or 100 years' time. Well, we know this now, uh, <laughs> Robert, because of the work of Svensmark, we know that cosmic rays increase cloud nucleation in the middle atmosphere. Uh, and we know that the IPCC is leaving out, and you, you mentioned them all, the biggest and the most deadly and uh, dangerous and effective cycles uh, that the sun unleashes, the larger cycles, the Bond cycle, the Glassberg. These are the major cycles that cause the dark ages and the, the fall of civilizations, the end of the Roman period, the end of the Minoans. Uh, these are the types of cycles that we need to be working into our models using paleoclimatology and other proxies, including historical records, and they just refuse to look at it, which is a shame for all young up-and-coming scientists they are missing out on the data yeah that's right unfortunately the for whatever reason the ipcc totally ignore all all the all these cl known well-known climate cycles well documented they totally ignore them and some of the scientists that uh, are respected by the ipcc which i won't name even come up with hockey stick type uh, things which eliminate known warming periods such as the medieval warm period and uh, cooling periods such as the Little Ice Age which are well known to have been caused by these climate cycles which as I say they totally ignore. Well, well doesn't that mean that they're acting, they're pretending or they're lying 
It's got to be one of the three, and it has to be on purpose, and there has to be a reason. Have you ever thought about why it, it could be that this is the way it is? Is it strictly policy and so that they have control of the governments? Yeah, I have thought about this, but um, what I try to do is just try and stick to one thing, David, which is the science. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a, there are other aspects uh, we can attack their um, reports on the IPCC's reports and the and the theories behind global warming, man-made, so-called man-made man -made global warming. We can attack them on the economics uh, and the science and uh, the moral issues involved because a lot of people are dying because of climate change action. Not because of climate change, but because of climate change action that they're taking. So we, we need to attack them on those three areas, I think. Uh, so science, economics, and the moral aspect. Uh, I'm sticking to the science part for the moment. Well, we dabble in all three, and I appreciate what you do especially. You bring a modicum of, of genius and repose, and now you have a PhD. And I find it hilarious that years ago, you've, you were, you've been attacked. You've been attacked by uh, cl uh, Climate Gate or whatever they're called and, and Climate Depot. And, and they, they called you a shill and that you were a Republican and working for the oil industry. And here you are, uh, Robert Holmes, PhD, as, as stoic as ever, unwavering, and you're going to continue to attack the science in a mechanistic way for the benefit of everyone, because people want to know the truth, don't they? That's what I find, yes. But, uh, there's very many people out there who, for many um, you know, good reasons, don't trust what they're being told by the mainstream media and don't trust what they've been told by the IPCC. So um, I think the, there is uh, a reason to continue with pushing for genuine science and the scientific method and uh, to question what we're being told. I think it's very important to do that. Well, we can't concur more. If you want to learn more about climate science, the newest uh, climate, PH, climate science PhD, Robert Holmes, 1000 Frawley on YouTube, is doing a series. He's already got four videos up. The next one's going to be about uh, major climate cycles and more of the IPCC fraud. You can find him over here on Twitter as well. And he also has a Patreon because no one is paying him to do this. He's doing this uh, out of the pure love of the science and to spread the truth. The same thing we do over on our channel. I can't thank you enough, Robert, for coming on the show. Do you have any parting words for our listeners? Um... Don't lose hope in, in science. Uh, so when, the, when the correct scientific method is followed, we will get to the truth. Thanks, David. Thank you for your time, Robert. It's been a great show. Guys, thanks for listening, and be safe.